One of the most hotly contested titles on the PSA World Tour has moved from its former home in Canary Wharf to a brand new backdrop. Round 1 of the London Classic began with electricity in the air as 32 world-class players took to court at the Coolhurst Squash Club. English wildcard Declan James celebrated his return to the PSA World Tour after spending over a year out injured with a sublime performance to reach Round 2. The Englishman played the court conditions perfectly, defending well and taking advantage of every opportunity presented by Egypt's Mohamed El Shabini to secure an 11-9, 11-7 win. Yeah, great. I feel relieved at the end of that. It was, uh, it was a tough match, you know. Um, played Mohamed once before, but many years ago, so you can't really go on, on, on that result. You know, he's up at 20 in the world now, so he's playing great squash. So I knew it was going to be a massive jump in level from what I've been doing. I've been playing well, but it's a completely different story trying to do it with someone in the top 50 and the top 20 in the world. And uh, I managed to hold my composure well because I was starting to get a little bit nervous at the end of the second there. You see the finish line a little bit early, so the last few points I was a bit edgy, but yeah, happy that I managed to uh, edge it out. Um, you know, I came out and took a little bit longer than him to settle down. I wasn't being quite positive enough, but I don't think I made too many errors today. And, um, you know, it's easy to go into that one game position lead and the, the, the guy that has a higher ranking claws you back because of the, the, the sort of intensity and the experience. So I was just uh, glad that I managed to kind of go through a couple of gears from the middle of both games onwards. I managed to find a little bit extra. So to be honest, motivation is never, um, never a problem for me. Um, you know, I'm disciplined, I train hard, um, I live a clean life, so um, motivation comes and goes. Um, it, it's kind of quite fleeting, so I don't rely on motivation, I'm just disciplined and I love to train. I love to train and love to play. Um, I know that I'm into the final third maybe of my career now, hopefully five more years left of a good, uh, good level, so just trying to enjoy it and trying to improve and become as good a player as I can be. The women's draw had a strong showing in their first ever appearance at the event. England's Alicia Mead got off to a strong start by beating world number 35 Marim Metwali in straight games, setting up a round two clash with the number six seed Sarah Jane Perry. It's not very often that you have those performances where you feel like everything comes together. It's one in 50 where you feel like everything's working well or as you hoped for. Um, so I had a bit of a game plan and I was moving well and the court suited me and it was, you know, home crowd as, as such playing in the UK. So um, I really, really enjoyed that. I just thought I hit some really good weight of shot and lines and the court was quite hot and I thought I found the balance quite well, not over hitting the ball too well and um, taking the straight attacking well when it was, when it was there, so um, didn't make many errors. Best of three, I wasn't quite sure what to expect and didn't want to come out too frantic and fast because I think having not played a best of three before on tour, I think my original thought was to be a bit rushed and you've got to go 100 miles an hour because it happened so quickly, but it's just a game of squash, it's the same squash that you play in a best of five, so uh, managed to stay calm and, and execute. Quite well, I thought. And obviously, it's going to be a big home crowd, you and SJ, in the, in the next round. Like, how much are you looking forward to playing in Alexandra Palace? It couldn't, couldn't be better, really. Like, I, I couldn't ask for more. I've got, I've got friends coming now, I hope. <laughs> um, yeah, at home, glass court. It's just, yeah, going to be amazing. Can't wait. If anyone was at all worried that this tournament might have lost any of its magic in the move, you can put those worries to rest as 26-year-old Timothy Brownell put on a stunning performance over former winner of the Canary Wharf Classic, Faraz Dasuki. The US number one saved two game balls in the first and went on to win the match 12-10, 12-10. Yeah, I mean, it feels amazing. Um, I'm out here with my mom, and uh, to, to get a big win in front of her was, uh, was pretty special. And obviously, Ferris is someone I've watched for a lot of years on, on TV, so to play him was pretty special, and to play, to play well, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, obviously, uh, very confident in my squash. I've been working really hard. Uh, obviously, the team in Philadelphia, Ong Bang Hee and uh, Bridget, our trainer, we've, we've all been doing so much work, and it's really showing. Uh, so, yeah, I've got a lot of confidence that, that I'm not really a pushover, and I'm going to be able to test the top boys. So I'm just looking forward to tomorrow night, and I think it's going to be a cracker on, the, on that nice glass court. And you get uh, the top seed in the next round. How are you preparing for that? Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, I've watched Paul, you know, so many hours, and I've actually played him a few times. So I, I, I'm pretty sure what I need to do. The issue is I got to do it. Uh, that's very hard. His level's so high. Uh, and he's very simple. But uh, yeah, I'm going to prepare well, get the body ready, and it's two out of three, so you never know. So I'm going to swing it. There was a plethora of home interest at the Coolhurst Squash Club as England's George Parker took an impressive win over world number 30, Auguste Dussault. He will go on to have a rematch against Ika Baharez, who got the victory over Parker in the Optasia Championships. It's been a weird couple of uh, well, years really, like I've been on and off injured and not really got sort of the love for it, you know, and the, like the mojo of wanting to try and train hard repeatedly. So it's been, 
been up and down, but my squash seems to be, you know, getting a bit smarter and a bit better, I think technically. I've been physically better in the past, you know, I've been stages where I've been so fit that my squash has never matched, but it seems, I just seem to be playing a bit more freely re uh, recently. Um, I feel like my short game's got a bit better and I thought that was the difference there, really. He, he might be carrying a slight injury, like I said, my last tournament, Ica, he looked like he might have been hobbling a bit, but then, you know, when it gets tough, they start moving around anyway, so I don't think he was that injured and, you know, I probably had just a tiny bit more racket ability around the middle when it needed it to be. Best of three probably suited me as well, so it's different every tournament, you know, it's a mixed bag, but I'm just happy the way I'm just seeing and hitting the ball, you know, and it's good to get a win for me, you know, that's big, big points and good money after being injured and, you know, not having the best of results going to America and stuff, it's good to, good to pull out a win like that. Close to home, you know, best of three. You know, take it to. I got nothing to lose here. Like, I'm coming in at 50 in the world. You know, like, like, there's been times when I've been seeded to win my first rounds and these and pressure and England squash and that kind of stuff. Now I'm a free man, really. Like I can I can do what I want. So like I'm just gonna enjoy, enjoy. Like you know, I'm coaching a bit now, so it's good to get the balance between doing a bit of coaching and then actually being able to compete like this. It makes this enjoyable. So yeah, I'm just gonna let, let me on go see what happens. Awesome. Thanks very Sweet. much. For that, mate. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Jasmine Hutton and Millie Tomlinson took to court in an All England clash, with Hutton eventually taking the win to secure a place in round two. Yeah, it feels pretty nice. You know, it's the first time we've got a girls' event at this event, and um, it's really exciting. So I'm just really happy to be here, especially as it's pretty local to home. So it's a really nice feeling. She's such a tricky player. Um, you know, she's been top 20 before, so a real credit to her. She's really experienced. So I knew it was going to be really hard. Um, she's quite a quirky character, so. I knew it was going to be tough mentally, so I had to kind of just stick at it quite a lot. But um, also being best of three, you know, you have to kind of take every point as it counts um, because it's so, every point is vital. So um, yeah, I was just trying to try and focus as much as I could on each point. It was nice, you know, it's quite a, I don't know how to describe it, it's quite intense and intimate, which is actually quite nice in a way because some of these venues you go to and you have your first round, there's not always a lot of people there, maybe because it's in the daytime and people are at work, but it was actually just really nice to have a small intimate crowd and you know a lot of people applauding nice rallies and stuff so yeah it was quite nice to be here those are our top stories from round one of the london classic 2024 make sure you don't miss the round two coverage from the glass court at alexandra palace you can catch all the action live and on demand on squash tv